name is Katie, and I'm in the seventh grade. Today, I want to talk about energy, nuclear energy to be specific. Oh, and this is my dog, Casey. You might see her in the video from time to time because she has a lot of energy to burn. Following the Fukushima reactor meltdown to Japan, now many people are rethinking nuclear energy. Maybe it's too dangerous, but I'm thinking, is there a way to make it safer? Why use nuclear power anyway? Well, nuclear power has a very high energy density. What does high energy density mean? A very small amount will produce a whole lot of energy. Let's look at different types of energy. There's kid-powered energy. Good for having fun! Even transportation. But it can't power a city. There's wind power, which is very cool and green, but it will take a lot of windmills to power a city. Wind energy just isn't very dense. Then there's the carbon-hydrogen bond. Fossil fuels such as petroleum and natural gas have a lot of CH bonds. When burned, a large amount of energy is released. Fossil fuels have a higher energy density than wind. Now, nuclear energy has one million times the energy density of CH bonds. Wow! Reactors today are high-pressure, water-cooled, solid-fuel reactors. They use uranium-235, which fissions to krypton and barium and other products releasing energy. Loss of coolant leads to accidents like Three Mile Island and Fukushima. In the 1950s, Alvin Weiberg, director of Oak Ridge National Labs, was tasked with building a nuclear reactor for an airplane. The constraints were safe, simple, low pressure. Sounds like what we're looking for! And so the bold salt reactor was developed. After running for four years, it was dropped in favor of solid fuel reactors. Today we learned we can run this type of reactor on thorium. In the thorium fuel cycle, thorium-232 transmutes to thorium-233 when it is bombarded with a neutron. Thorium-233 then beta decays, where a neutron turns into a proton, and an electron and antineutrino are released into protactinium-233. Protactinium-233 then beta decays to uranium-233. When uranium-233 is bombarded with a neutron, it fissions, releasing fission products, energy, and neutrons. One of these neutrons hits the thorium-232 atom, starting the process all over again. Following is a claimation of the thorium fuel cycle that I created. A mold salt reactor with thorium as the fuel is Lifter, a liquid fluoride thorium reactor. This is the fuel salt core consisting of uranium-233, and this is the fertile salt blanket with thorium. This is the hot salt that goes to the power generator and heat exchanger. This is the warm salt coming back. The fuel salt can be extracted using a simple chemical process to extract useful fissure byproducts, waste, and extract the uranium to be put back into the fuel. And the fertile salt can be extracted in much the same way. And you can take the uranium out of the fertile salt and put it back into the fuel salt. This is a freeze plug cooled by an external cooling fan. In the event of loss of power to the reactor, the freeze plug will melt and the fuel salt will drain into a drain tank where fission is impossible. Lifter has many safety advantages over the solid fuel reactor. Lifter has stable self-regulating reactions compared to the solid fuel reactor, which has unstable reactions, which require active control. The lifter can run at low pressure compared to the solid fuel reactor, which requires high pressure. There is no coolant needed for the lifter. Loss of power causes the molten material to safely cool to a stable form. There is no concept of a meltdown. In the solid fuel reactor, coolant is required. Loss of power leads to dangerous overheating and potential radioactive contamination. In the lifter, the liquid fuel forms ionic bonds with the salt, and they are not damaged during radiation. The fuel efficiency is 96% compared to the solid fuel reactor, which forms covalent bonds, which are damaged during the radiation. The fuel efficiency is less than 1% and spent fuel pools require cooling. In the lifter, there is no water present. If flooding should occur, the radioactive materials, which are ionically bonded with the fluoride salt, are not water soluble. There is no radioactive cloud or groundwater. Compared to the solid fuel reactor, which uses water as a coolant, 
During an accident, it covalently combines with the radioactive materials and leads to widespread release. In the lifter, there is a very small amount of radioactive waste compared to the solid fuel reactor, which produces large amounts of radioactive waste, which cannot be reused. In the lifter, there is no hydrogen gas compared to the solid fuel reactor, which contains hydrogen gas that may cause explosions during an accident. What's next? I'm currently writing a computer simulation to compare the safety of solid fuel uranium reactors to the lifter. So the next time someone talks about nuclear energy, tell them about the liquid fluoride thorium reactor. Bye!